Welcome back to The Lemon Factor. I'm Chad, and today I'm gonna to take you through the how-to install of an upgraded intercooler on our 10th generation Honda Accord. So in our last video, I went through a comparison between the PRL intercooler and the Mishimoto intercooler. And in this video, I'm gonna go through the install. You'll, I'll reveal to you which one of the intercoolers I'm gonna use on our project car, this 2019 Honda Accord 2.0 Touring. I'll go through the steps. Overall, the install is fairly straightforward. It's gonna take a little bit of time. We do have to remove the entire front bumper. I will take you through what I believe could be some areas of concern to help you out to make sure that if you attempt this install yourself, you have all the necessary information available at your fingertips. So if you're interested in watching more, then stay tuned. To start off, we want to disconnect the negative battery terminal. Move these three push clips. One on the driver's side here and on the passenger side. I'm using a special tool to remove these clips. They're very delicate. Chances are you will break one. I highly recommend not only being careful, whether you're using a flathead screwdriver or one of these tools, but my, my recommendation is really to buy a kit that has several of these pieces. These clips are attached everywhere. You're bound to break a couple of these, which I have done in the past. We're gonna remove these six one, two, three, four, five, six clips at the top of the bumper. Before doing so, however, add some painter's tape to your headlights and to the edge of the bumper. We remove the six clips from the top. We're gonna to go to the bottom, but we do have 11 of those same type of clips underneath the car. I did find that it was actually easier to use a small flathead. The first screw and then the second screw without jacking up the car. It did turn the wheel a little bit just to get behind there. And like I said, I used a stubby screwdriver. Now we're going to take off the bumper itself. And I'm gonna start on this side and then I'll move over to the other side. Here's the attachments. This is the passenger side. Then you're up here. This goes into this. Got another one here. And so on. Definitely want to get into there and disconnect those fog lights. You don't want to yank on those wires as you remove the front bumper. So this top part was underneath here. I squeeze the top. You can either use needle nose pliers, your fingers, a flathead screwdriver to pop this off to give yourself some more room. Squeeze underneath, press underneath, underneath, and you may have to give it a little bit of force, but it will disconnect itself. It should be. There we go. <clears throat> now again, be careful. Another reason why I liked having it low to the ground and with the carpet pad down was didn't have far to go. Carpet pad protected it. This is what I feared when I was removing it. So you have your clips here. You got one here, here, 
further up and look what happened here. So this one broke, not sure how big of an impact it will have to have one missing, if I'll notice any sag or if it'll still attach pretty well. I'm glad it's not one of the ones on the end. And here is the OEM intercooler. So this is the hot side, meaning the compressed air coming off of the exhaust comes through here, runs through the intercooler off to the other side where it finds its way back to the engine. Now we have the Honda Sensing right in the middle of our intercooler and we have to be really careful in removing that. Follow the bar, then curves up. We have to go through this hole opening right here and this is where our extension will come in handy. Same with the other side, we'll fall over and then its way up and we'll come up and we have that opening here. We'll do this first with our socket wrench and 10 millimeter socket. I think you can at least see it. There's a plate right there, but there's a hook right to the left. So if you take those bolts off either side and then try to just pull it down, you're not going to be able to lift up first, then pull forward. Now for the two bolts underneath the sensor itself. Now that we've moved the Honda sensing sensor and bar out of the way, we have full access to the intercooler. Just moved it off to the side. If you're going to jack up your car, you will probably want to disconnect the sensor wires. And if you really like this video, if you found a lot of value in the information contained in this video, please consider hitting that super thanks button at the bottom of the video. Now we're finally ready to remove the intercooler. I'm going to go over to the hot side and we are going to using a 12 millimeter socket remove these two bolts. I am also going to loosen the bolt back here. That will give me a little play on this bracket so it'll be a little easier to remove. I'd like to point out that there is a grommet here as well as up here. Those will transfer to our new intercooler. On the cold side, we're going to loosen and disconnect this hose. A huge difference between the OEM intercooler and the Mishimoto, both in size and in weight. Not, I don't like the fact that the Mishimoto weighs as much as it does. It's definitely putting a lot of additional weight on the front. However, the benefits of the increased cooling should outweigh the added weight. According to Mishimoto's website, it does call for the reuse of the rubber O-ring from the OEM to theirs. Personally, I don't like that. For the cost of the Mishimoto intercooler, they could have given a new O-ring. I've gone ahead and transferred the OEM to the Mishimoto. I have the Mishimoto intercooler upside down now, but I wanted to show you the transfer of the rubber grommets, the rubber feet um, from the OEM to the Mishimoto. We'll then At the top here, this is the reason why I loosened that bolt up here. I had some play. This seats right in, as you can see. We're gonna insert our two 12 millimeter bolts we're going to torque them down to 18 foot-pounds. On the other side, same thing. Make sure the grommet foot is put in place. At the top, we have the same situation where I did loosen this bolt back here so I could have some play with this bracket and seated that. We then To reinstall the Honda sensing unit, all you're doing is going in reverse order of how you 
disassembled it. Before I put the bumper back on, I'm going to start the car and listen for any leaks. If everything sounds good, you'll install the bumper in the reverse manner. Once you have the intercooler installed, you just do everything in reverse order to put back on the bumper. I hate when people put it like that. It's not that simple. As soon as you get the intercooler on, you're going to be tempted to rush through getting the bumper back on your car so you can jump on the road and see if you notice any difference with the intercooler. And I caution you not to do that. Take your time reinstalling the bumper. You don't want to mess up anything and regret it later. So a couple recommendations. Start on one side. Doesn't matter if it's the passenger side or the driver's side. Start on one side, connect the corners, take a look at the tabs and how the clips pop into place. That'll help give you an idea of how to properly align those. Time, make sure things line up. And yes, you do have to give it a little bit of, you know, force to pop things in place. But the last thing you want to do is do that and end up breaking one of those clips. So line it up, pop them into place. As far as the bottom is concerned, make sure the bumper, the white pieces are tucked under instead of over or instead of some under, some, some over. Make sure those tabs underneath here are tucked under. Line things up nicely. I'd start securing with those push clips just a couple spots to hold it up. Another thing that helped out a lot was because I'm working alone, I use the box, the PRL, whether you're installing the PRL or the Mishibono, the boxes are relatively the same. Lay it down on its side and it just so happens to be the perfect height to rest the bumper on, especially if you're doing this alone. It makes it a lot easier. So, if you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think. But with that said, I am anxious to get in the car and test drive the car. Remember, you're gonna have some check engine lights on, so just drive it for a little bit, stop, turn your car off, turn it back on. You should, you should be fine. I think that's it for today. Thank you very much for joining. And until next time.